Good morning at home viewers. Uh, I'm here this morning with uh, Minister David Hodgett. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? It's a great day to be here oh, in Mornington. The weather gods definitely haven't smiled on us today, have they? Not today, but it's always good down here. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, we were going to have a bit of a walk to out along the pier, have a look at the construction. Yep, works are well underway, so it'd be good to uh, actually get down here and inspect where they're up to today. Fantastic. Uh, been a couple of problems with weather on that, but uh, we will get these works finished and get it open to the public as soon as we can. Mr Hodgett, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening here? Yeah, sure. We're here at the uh, Mornington P uh, Pier, which is uh, we're preparing behind us here for the next uh, concrete pour. There'll be one of three pours wow. here for the works here. Uh, works have been a bit delayed with the weather and we haven't got the best day today, but... Uh, the first pour, I think, will go ahead tomorrow, weather permitting. Yep. And then after that pour, we've seen here this morning the wave baffles. Yep. Uh, and that's very important. If you look over here, the protection of the, uh, the vessels and boats that are moored, yep. that gives them the protection rather than having to get beaten around on the moorings. And, uh, you know, everyone that buys a boat is uh, very proud of their asset. Absolutely. And uh, so they want it protected and looked after. And these wa wave baffles do an amazing job in terms of dissipating the waves. And, yeah. and they, they'll be bolted on all the way along here, the whole length. Yep. of the pier and, uh, and when it's open provide that protection to the vessels here. Getting those wave screens up and getting the energy out of the out of the harbour uh, yeah. is, is a terrific uh, terrific development, it really is. Well, we've all heard the horror stories of yachts and boats washing up on the beach after storms smashed, yeah. so hopefully that'll be, uh, that'll be all behind us now. Dave has been a champion of the project down here, I mean since uh, this is a big project, one that the Victorian government's committed to. You know, nearly a bit over $15 million of works in here and you'll yep. see once these concrete pours go on the uh, timber decking goes on yep. and a few uh, a bit of lighting associated works will be a great asset here for uh, in David's electorate and for the people of Mornington. One of the things that's really really been kind of a hot topic in fishing is the Lang Lang Pier. Yep. So Minister where do you stand on the Lang Lang Pier? Look the Lang Lang Pier is, uh, was a great asset I think yep. uh, if my facts are correct I think it was uh, damaged by uh, gale force winds and uh, high waves in, in about 2004. Then it had to be uh, had to be demolished or something in 2007, I think it was. But a, a great long pier, about 1.6 metre wide um, for yep. fishing. Yep, it was great yeah, for Very, very popular in the summer months and, and all year round, as a matter of fact. So so that's 2007. So there's been a, uh, a community uh, wanted the, um, the pier to be replaced or yep. rebuilt. Yep. Uh, Brian Painter is our candidate down in Cassie. Uh, Bass and he's championing the cause here. I think as early as this week, there was a community meeting with all stakeholders and groups. Yep. And I think um, that was a, that was a great process, from what I've heard, in terms of them uh, working out what's the priority. Yep. Should we rebuild Lang Lang Pier? Would it be better to uh, further develop boat ramps down there? You know, what's the greatest priority? So I think that process is going to be terrific in terms of getting the local community to involved in uh, determining what's going to happen. It's all right for you or me to say, look. This is what we want. There's no no better. Uh, you know, we believe as a government, there's no better people to make those choices or prioritise than locals. Exactly right. So we'll get VR Fish involved. Uh, we'll yep. get the local community involved. We'll get all stakeholders involved uh, in our working group. I think is going to be established out of that meeting. Yep. Um, and Brian will champion the cause here. Now, you know, if they, if they want to rebuild the pier, well, then it's a matter of us to prioritise that as a government. So I look forward to see what uh, what happens with it. Yeah, great asset. No shortage of works in and around the bay. I oh. think. Um, Talking to Victor before, we uh, this works down at Rosebud Pier, Mordialic Pier. Uh, we finished off the St Kilda Pier Marina there. That was a great project. Yeah. We're here at Mornington today, which uh, which is a huge project here, but it'll be a great asset when it's finished. Uh, down at Port Arlington, St Leonard's. Uh, there's plenty of work in and around the bay. You've been a busy man. But as as we all know, <laughs> uh, these facilities. I think I saw a fisherman here before. These yeah. facilities are used all year round. Yeah, they are. But particularly over the summer months, so that, you know, these places just come alive with, uh, with people enjoying swimming, uh, boating, fishing, or as uh, David Morris, the local member, was saying before, just just for general enjoyment, people yeah. come and enjoy it. I think a lot of people just come down with Mornings and Pier, just grab a coffee and just walk out. And it's such a social place. It's become like this social hub for Mornington and Peninsula people, yeah. just to get together and enjoy. So, well, thank you so much for your uh, commitment to upgrading it. It really means a lot to the community. And uh, yeah, it's very good. My pleasure. Look forward to coming back here in uh, early 2015, seeing the finished works. And bring the family down. We'll have a fish together. We will indeed. Excellent. Might catch some. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs>
we're going to go just sit on the end of the pier, wait for the tide to come in. Um, if you're travelling down the Bass Highway, South Kippy Highway turns into the Bass Highway, you get to Grantville, uh, you turn at the service station there, and um, yeah, there's the pier just up along the shoreline. It's a very rocky area, so it's really, really good for um, gummies and, and snapper and things like that to come in and feed off the crabs. Like a lot of the spots we fish land base for gummies. Uh, strike rate down there is, you know, like most places, 50-50, put in the time, you'll get the fish. I just got the time tonight, it's gonna to be a good tide. Uh, well, there's no wind for a change, because we're heading in the middle of winter, and all the storms are just passed. We've got a nice low pressure system coming through. So we're just gonna see how we go tonight. Jesse's behind the camera, and he'll be on the pier joining me a little bit later on. Here we are, down here at Granville Jetty. It's only a small jetty. The water is looking fantastic. It's the 20th of July. We've got the tide on the rising tide. This rocky area is the exact habitat you want for the gummy sharks and snapper and elephant sharks and things like that. They come up here and they feed off all the stuff. The past few weeks, it's just been howling, howling winds. Port Phillip Bay, Western Port has just been absolutely smashed. I'm surprised it's actually still standing. It's daytime now. It probably won't be daytime when we get a fish. And I reckon we're guaranteed to catch a fish tonight because I haven't seen weather look this good since the last time we caught a fish, Jesse. <laughs> Our surroundings, we've got <clears throat> Stockyard Point over here, we've got Tembi Point over here to our left, and we've got French Island dead in front. And let's hope somewhere in the middle there's a nice big gummy shark. <laughs> Normally I don't go anywhere without pilchards, but I just thought I'd try something different, just go with a trevally tonight. I know gummy sharks love trevally. You can, <clears throat> you can actually strike with a circle hook, but it's a very slow strike. You just lift the rod up, and that will curl the hook in the fish's mouth. Get a bite, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the mullet. <laughs> Got a lot of circle hooks, you don't even need a rod. <laughs> you love your mullet. Oh, I love whatever I can catch. I reckon you should grow a mullet. <laughs> In you go. Straight to the bottom. <laughs> well, get it back in. Try and get another one. Got it. Got another, one. <laughs> another one. Well, there you go, folks. Live hookup on mullet on Ozfish TV. It is Saw a mullet. It here first. <laughs> it's the same one. It's pretty so. standard for around here, mate, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's it. Just like Lang Lang, this sort of structure. And your mullet around. So, yeah, if you're the sort of fisherman that likes using mullet, and then this sort of fish, just. Yeah, I'm you not. Take the, take the family down, just give the kids a hand line, they can get your bait for you. What have we got? It's a it salmon. Is a salmon. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> but it beats a donut. I oh, know, mate. You caught some mullet before. It's a little stubby one. That explain what's been banging our baits really hard and making it look it like does. we're getting decent hits. What's surprising about this salmon is that that coloration indicates that it's a mature fish, or close to being a mature fish. But he's only small. Usually they don't get that coloration until they get to that close to a kilo mark. So he's a very quickly maturing fish with the dark blue pattern. Okay, when you're fishing, it's really important to know both your size and bag limits. These stickers are really, really important. Fisheries put them out. This is the one for freshwater. This is the one for saltwater. This is the one that they've just introduced for Mickey D. He has apparently bagged out on donuts and is now in, in danger of being prosecuted by fisheries. Don't be like Mick. Follow the rules. That's my two cents.
What do you got there, young Hoff? I think he's a salmon while he's jumping, but could be wrong. You know, I just like the bait feeder style, really, in case something. It's quite often you get your gummies and that on your whiting rods, not expecting it. And you got your lock drag, like a lot of people fish for mullet, which isn't a good idea. Yeah, you like so, a little bait runner, don't you? Yeah, so I can just use that. If something decent takes it, then we'll know about it. Anyway, <laughs> I wouldn't call that something decent, so it's time to go back in. Yeah, he's a little bit small, mate. Another nice mullet. Ripper. Sweet, they're back on the board. Oh, I'll keep you entertained. That's oh, it, mate. Good. Caught on some nice Jarvis Walker gear here, so um, <laughs> I'm happy about that. And if you ever are going to eat these guys, I recommend about 25 centimetres. The small ones are really sweet, but obviously you want them legal size. Not 26 centimetres, not 24? No, exactly 25. Oh, yeah. It has to be exactly 25. Yeah. 26. They, so um, if it's 26, can we just cut a bit off the tail? Or? We can. Okay, we're back down here at Grantville for night three. Last night we stayed here till about 11 o'clock and it was freezing. Never seen so much fog in all my life. And yes, we're suckers for punishment. We're back out here again tonight. And we're gonna keep coming back until we get a fish. I don't even need a net for this, this little guy, I don't think. No. Well. Three very cold nights for this little guy. <laughs> that isn't the gummy we came here for. But it's, <laughs> it's keeping me intrigued, I must admit. All right, little fella, off you go. Night four, back down here at Grandfield Pier. Now it's <laughs> still freezing, and it's uh, it's about six o'clock. The tide's coming in, so hopefully tonight is the night. All right, Jesse, you you loving loving the cold weather, mate? Yeah, I don't mind it. I actually like winter. All right, your turn for the mini fish. A uh, little mullet. Come here, little bugger. Very skinny. Yeah given you a bit of grief all for the past few days about catching these little mullet and I thought oh we've been out here for about four hours and I've been bored as so anyway yeah, good fun on that rod yeah, yeah I must yeah the flex in this <laughs> rod's awesome but yeah well there you go mate you wanted your mullet yeah I'll chuck him on right yeah well <laughs> four days at Grandfield Pier and we've come up with bugger all donuts one big major fail from me and Jesse <laughs> well silly enough we got real desperate we fish right through every night until there's about a foot of water don't be discouraged by Grantville it can fire at times I know it does I've seen it I've seen a lot of people get a lot of good fish off this pier uh, we just weren't one of them well what can I say I'm a sucker for punishment so is Jesse we've decided to come back down to Grantville Pier again we spent about a week down here last time with very little result a few little fish in here and there and that was fun but not the sort of fish we're after so I thought we'll give it one more crack because uh, I'm pretty persistent and I like to keep hitting the spot until I get something decent. Hopefully, tonight is our night. If it's not, then we get to come down again, Jesse. Well, we're looking at about two to three meters of water right now, and in my head, that just screams summer. Shallow water, water warms up, fish coming close. It's like the aquatic version of sunbathing. It sounds silly, but it's completely true. What is that? Oh, good night. Dummy, I think. Not bad. This 
go. Now they've got to be 45 centimeters from the gill rake into the tail. So the back, the back gill slit there, which is pretty much where the petrol fin is. Sorry, the dorsal fin, petrol fin. Sorry, to the base of the tail here. But anyway, we're pretty. I'm pretty happy with that. You happy with that, Jess? Yeah, he's all right. He's not a bad little guy, is he? Well, this is our journey down at Granfield Pier. Wasn't much of a success, was it, mate? No. But we did catch some fish. Now, our objective was to catch a half decent gummy. <laughs> well, we caught half a gummy. Look, he wasn't too bad. It was legal, but they're that small when they're that size. I don't like to keep them. So he went back swimming. We uh, we have persisted down here a lot, and uh, we've caught quite a few little fish. If you want to come down here, I'd I'd. Uh, no, I'd suggest come down in summer, what do you reckon? Definitely, when the water's warmer and the fish yeah. are in a bit closer. Well, it's just hit spring now and we started to get a lot more bites than what we've been getting through winter. So if you want to battle it out through winter, go right ahead, but I reckon summer's probably a better spot. You'd want to get down here early, it's a very narrow pier, so you'd want to be the first one down here. There is a concrete landing where you saw us fishing over there. Um, it's, it's the same depth of water all the way through here, so but we just wanted to hit the pier to just get it out that little bit further tonight and it worked. Okay, so the Hoff's gone to South Australia this weekend. Chris has gone to Queensland. Left me to fend for myself. So I'm giving Mark a call. I'm giving Scotty a call. I'm going to go fishing. And uh, I've got young Benny here who works with me. Howdy. How you going, mate? Good. Coming fishing? Ah, uh, no. Nah. Yeah, you got the bubs. All right. Well, it's left up to us. We're gonna head down to Vias Bay and hopefully we pick up something off the beach. Okay, so we're in down here at uh, Venus Bay. And it's just the start of spring. Snapper season's gone off with a major bang. But we're actually not out here chasing snapper tonight. We're just out here trying to chase some salmon, trevally, mullet, whatever's around. And uh, we've had a couple of nibbles so far, but we'll have to see what tonight produces. Scott and Kerry. Hi guys. How, you going? How are we? Good. Having a great time, just hoping something will jump on our line instead of yours. <laughs> it's not too cold tonight, is it? Not that cold. <laughs> see Mark the Minion. Get a nice hit there, Mark. Yeah, it's a very light action rod, so everything looks bigger. It's uh, fighting very well. It is. That would have to be a Trevally, I reckon. I would have thought. Down there, probably one of the better ones. And I believe wow. Kerry likes Mate, it, I love that it? rod. That's a custom built rod, isn't it? Yes, it is. And what do you call it, Mark? I call it the Black Death. <laughs> and you've got a white one just like it. And what do you call that one? Well, funnily enough, the White Death. <laughs> Not very original. Mate, that is taking you right up the beach. <laughs> He's coming slowly. That's a big Trevor. There we go. Trevor or a grunter? You hear him grunting? Yeah. Do like, they have spines on like them that you grunter? Yeah, there's one dorsal which I've got my hand just in front of, but apart from that they're pretty good actually. They've pretty actually, good eating too. Actually got what, There's no parasites. Down, down the tail here? Yeah. Yep. But they're usually, they're only dangerous when they get bigger. So, no, they're a nice little, nice little fish. That's probably one of about a pound and a half. And, um, yeah, good eating too. But this one swallowed the hook, so we might keep this one. Okay. Here's you need to have a bug right down that gulp. Paras parasite free. This one, it usually attaches itself to its tongue and then it, it shares a bit of whatever it's eating. Okay. So, yeah, very good, very, uh, very nice fish. They are very, very good pelagic fish. And yeah, very good to eat too. Sashimi, I hear. Yes, you can have them, uh, yeah, very much. I think you got a fish there, mate. You do too. What do you got? What is it, buddy? What does it look like? Mm, salmon. It's a little salmon. Good boy. Oh, cool. Uh, salmon. He's a nice little salmon, isn't he? Mm hmm. You feel alright in the rod? Yeah. Alright, get him back in the water, champ. Cool fish, mate? Yep. Yeah? Is that your first salmon? Yeah. Yeah? Awesome. 
Is that your first fish for tonight? Mm-hmm. Get the rod back in and see if we can get a bigger one, hey Boo? Yep. Hopefully we're not going home. <laughs> that, that's what I like to hear. A young fella that wants to stay out fishing. Good on you, mate. That's because I don't go want the to blues. go. That's because I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> Saturday night, loves a fishing. <laughs> Okay, both rods going off at once. This one's got a bit more kick into it than the other one. Obviously that last one was a mullet, which I cannot show you in a minute. You hold on to a little bastion, mate. Let's we'll see what this one is. Oh, this one's definitely... Show us the mullet you got there, mate. That's nice rebelly, nice mullet. What do you reckon we get the mullet back in the water? All right, let's get a release. Mate. Oh, looks like I'm gonna have to walk out. There he goes. He's upright, he's upright. He's doing donuts, go around in circles. There he goes. Come on, mate, what are you doing? <laughs> You're going the wrong way, buddy. There he goes. He's just trying to find a little pocket and he can get upright. There he is. And gone. What do you reckon, buddy? Yeah. Alright? Yep. Just washed my hands and my feet still <laughs> I'm gonna have to re rig now because my rig snapped in half. Alright, we'll just put a bit of burley in the water too. I was throwing it out with, uh, let me just have a look for it. I'll just try and find it. Where's that? No, just your typical dog bowl thrower. You get it at your $2 shop. Bastion, just in. You just get your pallets in like that and then just flick them out. Well, let's see if we can get some more fish now. Looks like that burley's doing its trick. Yeah, mate. Scott and Kerry are leaving us. Awesome night. Uh, he had young awesome Bastion with you. He, 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 he's, uh, he needs to get home and get into bed. Yeah, we do. Bit tired. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Your night, not our night. Next time. <laughs> Next time it will be ours. Uh, Mark and I will just stay here for another five minutes and then we'll go. Well, as the night drew to a close, we had a couple of camera malfunctions and we had some bad lighting issues. It's a bit hard to film in the dark, but we end up getting a couple of real nice whiting off the beach. And uh, yeah, it would have been great to get on camera, but we didn't. We missed out on that. So here's a, here's a photo of them now. Now, next week, we have a really cool show. We went out, we go out with Uncle Charlie from Savage Seas Adventures. Chris and I venture over to Port Phillip Bay. And uh, we go out the heads and we go and search for some squid. And yeah, we had a really good day. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we'll see you next week on Ozfish TV. I hope you all enjoy it.